Hello, my name is Joe Hildreth, and welcome to Episode 9 of CNC for the Home Hobbyist. In this episode, I'll be discussing briefly what input-output, or I.O., is in terms of Linux CNC. I will also discuss some of the I.O. options that are available for Linux CNC. Keep in mind that I'm neither a machinist, teacher, nor an engineer. I'm a home hobbyist wishing to share my experience with CNC machines for the home shop. It is my hope that as the series progresses that enough material is presented to enable new users entering the hobby to adapt the information to their particular needs. With a little luck, I hope this prevents some people from running into the roadblocks along the way and flattens the learning curve a little. With that out of the way, let's get started. What is input-output or I.O.? Well, input-output, or I.O. as it's commonly called, is simply hardware that allows communication or data to flow from Linux CNC to the outside world and conversely allows data or communication from the outside world to flow into Linux CNC. Before we start talking about Linux CNC and its I.O., let's talk about some input-output devices you are most likely already familiar with. In your everyday computing, you make use of input and output devices. Some of these devices are strictly input, for example, the keyboard and the mouse, while others are only output, like your monitor and a printer. Additionally, there are some devices that are used for both input and output, like the network card or a modem. The idea to take away here is that the computer receives information from input devices, like the keyboard, and sends data to output devices, like putting a character on the monitor. Linux CNC works exactly the same way. It receives input from things like a keyboard, a pendant, limit switches, an e-stop, and encoders, and sends outputs to the computer screen, pulses the steppers and servos, or turns on the spindle. However, unlike using the computer, which comes with all the I.O. devices it needs, to use Linux CNC, we have to either add additional hardware or find hardware that already exists on the computer that can communicate with the stuff we want to attach to it on the outside world. Let's examine both. First, let's take a look at what the computer might offer. After all, we are hobbyists and saving money is a priority for most of us, right? If the computer offers something that might work, we should explore it. As it happens to stand, there are two devices on the computer that could serve our needs. These are the parallel port and the NIC, or network interface card. Both of these components were designed to send and receive communication or data to and from the outside world. I'll discuss each of these in turn. First, the parallel port. The parallel port has a long and storied history on the personal computer and has morphed over time. In the beginning, the parallel port was only unidirectional, meaning that it could send data out and was primarily used as a means of sending data to a printer. However, it didn't take long for people to realize that you can send information out of the parallel port much, much faster than the serial port that was commonly available at the same time. This resulted in companies redesigning the port to allow it to both send and receive data over time, improving it even more to allow it to operate at faster speeds. Obviously, the original parallel port, called the standard parallel port, or SPP, would be of little use to us since it would be required to receive data instead of just sending it. We don't have to worry much about this because the standard parallel port has not been in use for years and it's unlikely that the computer that you're using would even have one of these ports. In the late 90s, the IEEE 1284 standard was written to define two types of bidirectional parallel ports. These are called EPP, for Enhanced Parallel Port, and ECP, which stands for Extended Compatibility Port. The EPP specification was derived primarily for storage devices that require large throughput of data both in and out, and the ECP specification was intended to be used with devices like scanners, and it has the ability to use direct memory access and some other features. If the computer you're using is, say, 10 years old or newer, the parallel port installed on it will work with Linux CNC regardless if it's an EPP or an ECP port. It is worth taking note that newer computers do not come equipped with a parallel port as they technically have been replaced by USB technology. Have no fear, because parallel port add-on cards are readily available and are inexpensive. The Ethernet card. 
Well, in addition to the parallel port, most all computers today are supplied with an with either an onboard Ethernet port or as a separate card. Ethernet is one possibility for the home hobbyist, especially if there's no available slots on the motherboard to add a parallel port card. Unfortunately though, to use this technology with Linux CNC requires the installation of uSpace, which is a piece of software, and the purchase of additional cards. I'll cover this topic a little bit more later. Other options exist for adding I.O. to your Linux CNC computer. One company that provides such add-on cards is Mesa Electronics. They provide a range of FGPA, Field Programmable Gate Array, I.O. cards that plug into either the PCI or PCIe slots of your computer along with uh, cards designed for use with Ethernet. In addition to these mother cards, assorted daughter cards are available for different applications, including Servo, Stepper, RS-422 Serial, Digital I.O., Hardware Step Generator, Spindle Control, and more. Prices for these cards can run anywhere from $60 U.S. to $200 U.S., depending on the selection of cards that you want to utilize. The real power of this type of I.O. option is that you can create quite an elaborate system if you like, including lots of buttons and indicator lights. After learning the ropes of system integration, this option may want to be explored for creating more robust implementations. Details of these add-on cords can be found at MesaUS.com. I encourage you to go take a look around the site for details, including a link on how to install uSpace if you're interested. Unfortunately, at the time this video is being produced, I do not have any of these cards to demonstrate or set up. However, if there is a genuine interest, I would consider the idea of getting a couple of these cards and setting them up with practical demonstrations. I'll keep you posted if that happens. So the question is, what I.O. to use? While some of the above add-on card I.O. options appear quite attractive for some users, I believe from a home hobbyist perspective, and since this series is intended to teach and use an implementation of Linux CNC, I think most people will benefit from using the parallel port that either already exists in the computer or as an add-on card. If the computer you're using for Linux CNC does not have a parallel port, either as part of the motherboard or as an add-on card, you will need to acquire one. A search on Amazon or eBay for parallel port card will turn up plenty to choose from. The only important thing to consider is the open slots that are available on the computer. Uh, these will be one of the following. It's either going to be a PCI, PCI Express, or maybe an ISA if it's an older machine. You cannot, however, use a USB to parallel port adapter. Don't get one. They won't work for our application, so you've been warned. I've included pictures of these various slots to help you identify what your computer has. Once you've determined the type of slot the computer has, order your card. If your computer already has an onboard or add-on parallel port, you may want to consider buying an extra in case of mishap or perhaps maybe some system expansion later. So where to from here? Well, we've covered some of the I.O. options available to us for use with Linux CNC. Now there are more available to choose from than what I've covered, but the idea was to get your feet wet with what's available. Having gone through them, I've decided that the parallel port is probably the simplest and cheapest way to start with Linux CNC. In the next video, I want to talk more about the parallel port, how to get things connected to it, either with a breakout board, commonly called a Bob, or other integrated solutions. In the meantime, if you need to get a parallel port card, go ahead and get it, and maybe a spare to boot if you find them cheap. As always, thank you for taking the time from your busy life to watch my videos. If the videos I produce help you, please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing. CNC is an exciting and rewarding addition to the home shop, and if you have friends that are thinking about dabbling in it, please consider sending them my way. Other than that, have a blessed day.